Thank you. Uh, Commandant, let me begin with you. Would you describe for me and this subcommittee the importance of the CH-53K um, in its support for mobility for the Marine Corps and how its increased capabilities will provide, uh, meet the needs of, the, of um, our national defense? Senator, I can, and thank you for the question. The CH-53K is unique in, in the DOD inventory in that it can lift itself. It can lift 36,000 pounds external um, plus its internal load. It has in-flight refueling, and it can conduct operations at great ranges. So being able to sling load 36,000 pounds means it can, it literally can lift itself, and it is vital to our work in the Pacific and our inner island campaign. Uh, Admiral, let me ask you um, a, a similar question. Uh, the multi-domain uh, environment in which we now live uh, as the national defense strategy laid out, integration of platforms uh, to support the warfighter's ability to make rapid and informed decisions in fleet architecture. The Navy is enabling our autonomous fleet with artificial intelligence from Kansas. How does the integration of commercially available platforms support ongoing Navy efforts like Project Unicorn to deliver multi-source intelligence battle space preparedness? Thank you, Senator Mann. Complicated. My, my, the way I described it sounded pretty complicated, but maybe you can well, uh, highlight for me the importance. Certainly. You know, as we look to the, to the future and the, the evolution of both unmanned and autonomous platforms, it's really important to have that backbone, the architecture uh, through which we can communicate with them. So we are continuing to work through our project overmatch uh, to develop those opportunities, as well as with our disruptive capabilities office. I think if you look to the commercial space and in the innovation base, a, large, a lot of that technology and the work being done is out in the commercial sector. Uh, in the innovation space. So we stood up and under the Secretary's leadership, a disruptive capabilities office, which really helps connect us uh, to all the people that are developing those technologies in the innovation area so we can more rapidly get those into the hands of the warfighter. So that office's job is essentially to go out and work with commercial industry to see what is already out there that can solve challenges that we have and again, bring those uh, rapidly to bear. And is it working? It's, it is working. It's a great pipeline, and I'm really excited about it. Great. Mr. Secretary, last year I asked you about the status of the Navy's efforts in regard to Camp Lejeune. Um, your uh, staff and others have provided us with information in uh, preparation for expecting my, my question today. I think they've answered much of what I want to know. I would tell you that I've been, my staff has been told there's 190,000, 195, 195,000, 1,950 claims that have been received. 551 have evidence to support a settlement. Um, I don't know what about the other. Have all, have all 190,000 been uh, evaluated or they're still, those are still in the works? No, sir. Actually, 190,000 uh, 190, have Thank been you for saying submitted it on the online portal. Of those 190,500, uh, only 551 claims have actually submitted all the information that's necessary to be able to determine uh, evaluation on those claims. 63 currently qualify for a settlement offer. Um, of those 63, offers have been made to all 63 of those claimants. Of those 63 claimants who've completed their files, they've been made an offer basically, uh, they qualify for an offer. offer. Uh, 29 of the 63 were actually uh, accepted, two were declined, and the remaining uh, offers still await a decision. Uh, the total value of the 29 settlement offers that were already made is $7,500,000, and we remain deeply committed to working with all of these claimants uh, for the expeditious resolution of their claims once all the information is submitted on the portal. So, Mr. Secretary, the, the question I'm looking for an answer for is what is, what of the other 190,500, what's happened to those other claims other than the 551? The, they're essentially so, so gathering their paperwork and all the necessary medical evidence that's necessary to be able to submit it onto the portal. So a significant number of claims still are pending. That's correct, sir. Uh, and my final question, Mr. Chairman, is um, the supplemental that I hope that we receive in the Senate uh, this week. Um, 
Can you explain to the committee why this supplemental package is critical to preserving peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific and assuring our allies and partners? This is not a throwaway question. It's, it seems somewhat self-evident to me, but there is, um, there's been some talk about separating the variety of, of the package uh, into separate segments. Uh, I think it's a package that's important altogether, and I would love to know uh, from uh, your department if that's true and why. Senator, you, could be, you couldn't be more accurate with your assessment of how important I think it is to keep these packages together. As we continue to now look at three years of warfare on the Ukrainian battlefield, we have an obligation to support our sisters and brothers in Ukraine who are fighting not just for their own democracy, but the democracy of all nations. And if we fail to support them, as we have committed to doing so, then without question, I think that there'll be a future where we have to make even greater investments into the defense of Europe in the future. So that's point number one. Uh, there's no question in my mind that as the situation continues to evolve on the battlefields of Ukraine, that President Xi is also looking intently at our commitment and our reactions. And if we don't meet our requirements and our commitments in Ukraine and Ukraine falls, there's no question in my mind that he will be emboldened, actually, in his intent towards Taiwan in the future as well, too. And equally important, obviously, the defense of Israel, um, the defense of free trade uh, in the Red Sea and throughout the Middle East is incredibly important. And so all of the investments that the American taxpayers are making and hopefully will be making in defense of Israel and defense of our Ukrainian brothers and sisters on uh, deterring China are critically important, and they're all interrelated as well. And as I said earlier today, Many roads lead to Iran as well, too. So we need the investments in munitions and um, operations and O&M money to continue to support operations in the Red Sea collectively. And that's why I think all these packages are together in addition to the other parts of the supplemental that are also being considered. Fair to say that <clears throat> fair to invest uh, broadly around the ch uh, with the challenges we face around the world, invest in all of them, results in greater challenges to come uh, in each component. Without and, question, Senator. And you cannot single out one uh, for without causing consequences elsewhere, including the, the security of the United States of America. That's True? correct, Senator. I agree. Thank you.